this week, this week, this week, this week, this week. One of my goals for 2019 is to do one thing per week that makes me uncomfortable. I was inspired by the YouTube channel Yes Theory. It's also like gonna push me to do things that I wouldn't otherwise do. Uh, and so hopefully that pays off. It's a, an opportunity for a lot of growth um, and an opportunity to experience a lot of things I wouldn't otherwise because I would, I would uh, just like not wanna do it because it makes me uncomfortable. The first thing that I did is I told my parents that I am not like following Christianity anymore. Uh, I was on call all week trauma with my staff, triathlon training started. I went and met with uh, one of my professors about possibly switching out of HR and into the MBA program. I went to the master student social. Talking to, to people I don't know, I reached out to uh, that girl that I thought was cute, where everyone else is, is like partying, um, but I'm kind of just sitting in the corner. I sent uh, that guy an email about about uh, like wanting to switch to the MBA program. Messaged uh, that RA that I was talking about previously that I thought was cute. I met with uh, Greg, the guy from the MBA program. I heard that they're not gonna invite me to apply um, due to my lack of work experience. Oh, I tried a tangerine. Um, the girl that I text last week for the first time that one of my RAs uh, connected me with, I asked her to go to dinner with me. That uncomfortable conversation I had with a friend. I went on a date with a girl that my one of my RAs set me up with. We swam a mile to finals this week. I searched a few girls on Tinder. I, I cut my hair uh, and I dyed it. I bleached it. All one of the free counseling center on campus. I uh, drove down to Texas uh, by myself. I eat some new food. Went on a Bumble date. I was on call this week. I told my friend Holly about these videos. Classmates and professors saw me for the first time with my hair. My favorite faculty reception. Finally messaged her and she responded and she was like, yeah, like, for sure, let's get, let's get a meal. I asked a girl on a date meet the people you're going to be on an RA staff within the next year. Going into it, knowing that it's going to end, bought a bike. Developing these feelings that are getting stronger every time I see her, it just makes it more scary because of the the ending that I know has to come at some point. All my family, and for most of them, that was the first time that they'd seen me with my hair the way it was. Ended up sharing a bed. It was finals week. Ate at a place called One Bowl. I asked my dad uh, about if our insurance covers like therapy. I moved to North Carolina, starting my new work uh, as a intern. Ate with my second roommate. At a restaurant, I had to get what someone else was having. Tell a friend that I love them. As I mentioned last week, I turned that into, uh, I need to call a different friend every day and tell them I'm about um, that I'm agnostic. I delete Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter off my phone. Ask two girls that are interning at Ingersoll Rand if I could eat with them at lunch. Go on a trip by myself. I went to the intern social event because I ran without a shirt on. Go see a movie by myself. I ended up putting my challenge on Instagram, my Instagram story. I was vegetarian for a week. Did a backflip off the side of the pool, into the pool. Set up an appointment with a therapist. Had an interview for my uh, full-time position. Watch a scary movie. Putting myself in these social situations, I got an offer. I had Asian food for the first time, really riding a roller coaster for the first time in a long time, maybe over 10 years. I did a backflip. I took part in RA training. Dancing a little bit and being silly in front of my staff, which is fine because they know me and I'm not worried about it but also the BGRTLs, team leaders. I changed in the locker room, went to a guided meditation. 
attend every event that I was invited to. To a religious event that was non-Christian. I went and talked to Allie this week, uh, which is I did the triathlon that Morgan and I had been training for, a half Ironman distance, which is a 1.2 mile swim, a 56 mile bike ride, and a 13.1 mile run. Uh, saw uh, Dr. Edwards, the therapist I had set up an appointment with, finally reached out to a girl that I thought was cute. I tried pumpkin bread, sharing my mental health issues with people. I finals on Monday and Wednesday. I have a talk with one of my friends uh, because I was kind of uh, misleading her. I did not do Reddit or any of my sports blogs that I read or YouTube for a week. I re-downloaded Bumble. It's not going well. Asked the girl I matched with on Bumble to meet me in person. I always came and visited this weekend. I had to call um, HR, uh, management system, providers. Started leg day. Went to Ice's birthday party. I was on duty for Halloween weekend. I went to the Sky Happiness Retreat, uh, which is pretty much a retreat that is for uh, mindfulness, a little bit of meditation, a lot of breathing exercises, um, some yoga, some service, uh, games, getting to know new people. I let my residents give me a manicure. Dealing with roommate conflicts. I went to Canada. Something I've never done before is gamble. And no complaining for the week. And the other one was to try to be left-handed for the week. I did no sweet. I told a girl she was cute. I went to a group X class. Asked her if she'd be interested in going on a date with me. She said no. I went blind for a day. I reconnected with uh, someone who had been upset with me and I had been upset with them. I'm going to post my compilation video of all the things I did this year. This year was very challenging and um, I learned a lot. Don't like tell yourself no before someone else can. Like, one of those things is like take the leap. Like, do something that makes you uncomfortable that you kind of want to do, but like you're afraid of. It's so, like gotta gotta do it and see what what happens. Taking every opportunity you have to to like spend time with the people that you enjoy being around, and. And like doing things you like. You can't hate yourself into someone you love. Meaning like if you are trying to motivate yourself to change by saying like you hate this thing or that thing about yourself, like you're never gonna turn into someone you love doing that. If I recognize that like I want something or like something's good for me, but I'm not doing it because it makes me uncomfortable, then I need to do it. That's really what what prevents me and I think a lot of other people as well from doing things is the what ifs. It's like, what if they say no? What if I embarrass myself? What if, what if they are playing a prank on me? Which no, so few people are that mean. But like, it's a fear that you have. But is it really a well-founded fear? And like, it's kind of sad that that's something that holds me back and holds us back from from accomplishing the things or going after these things that we want is we we make up in our minds these scenarios of what could go wrong uh, and we let that paralyze us because you're so paralyzed by the fear of not doing something that you just don't do anything and his point was when you do that you're not reaching the goal that you're setting, the thing you're trying to achieve. You're not meeting that. You're not reaching that success. So in that way, you're still failing in that regard. And that's worse than failure because at least if you fail, like you took, you took a chance, you took an opportunity to go after that thing you were striving towards. It didn't work out, but like you had that possibility that it would. And even though it may not work out that time, it will in the future. But if you do nothing, then you're not even giving yourself that chance. A recurring theme with all these uncomfortable challenges I do is I get so worked up 
about it, which this one I didn't get too nervous. I just like, I'm very nervous going into it and thinking about all the what ifs and, and everything. But as soon as I actually begin doing whatever it is I'm trying to do to make myself uncomfortable, it's no big deal. It's not the things that we do that give us the memories and the, the joy. It's the people we do it with. It's not the unknown that scares us in a situation. It's that we think we know what's going to happen and that it's going to be bad. Um, but the truth is, we don't really know. People are the destinations. And so, for me, that means that it doesn't matter what you're doing or who, what you're seeing or where you're at. It's about who you're with and the experiences you share with them. The moments when I feel happiness is when I'm being fully myself. And so, oftentimes, try to restrain ourselves these different aspects of our personality or this different interest that we have because we're so worried about what other people think but that ends up making us less happy even though we're trying to be accepted by them because we're trying to get our happiness from their acceptance when we feel the most happy it's when we're just going for it and and enjoying being who we are and being that authentic self be like accept situations and people for who they are rather than getting upset that they're not a certain way. It's like, that's what they are, that's who they are. And so really just like, that is it. And then moving on from that point, because there's no point in worrying about it because it's, it's there and like, it doesn't affect you being you, right? You can still be yourself even in those situations around those people that maybe might not be the ideal person for you to click with. It can be something that you you just like be yourself and like even if the situation's not perfect then that's all right the present moment is inevitable so um, people often worry about the past or the future but the only thing that's like guaranteed right is right now and so saying like this is my situation this is where I'm at it's inevitable because I'm already here and then where do I go forward?